All right, so by now you should have done your analysis of 144 to 152. I'm going to take you through what I've found, and I'm going to start at the end, 152. So if you could all please have a look at that section. So the first thing I did is I went through and I picked, the, picked out these bass notes, D flat, F, G flat, A flat. And the thing that I found the most interesting was that we actually have the same chord pretty much all the way through. We've got a D flat chord, a D flat over F. We skip over the G flat and we have a D flat six over A flat. Now that's cool because essentially it's just the one chord moving throughout the bar. And then we pass over the G flat, which is chord four of D flat. The extensions are also interesting. So we've got a, the first chord here in 152 is a D flat major nine with note three. That means that we've got the major seventh and the major nine and the fifth of the chord. So the third is missing, which is quite interesting. We really often love having the third because it gives us our tonality in every chord. So that's an interesting choice that Stanhope has made. But we progress through the bar pretty much on the one chord. Very interesting. Let's go back to letter J. And we've found, or I found here, that we've got this same chord, or this same voicing, rather. A G major 9 with no third. And we have the same voicing here. D major 9, no third. It's quite interesting that Stanhope's chosen to be quite ambiguous with the tonality of these chords before landing on this big E major 7 chord at the peak of this little crescendo, D crescendo. It then moves from the same E major 7 chord into a big E major 7 chord to another major 9 no, three. This time we've added the sixth in there. And we don't have the fifth as well. There's also no five. But you don't really need the five. The five, you could say, is suspended here. This is the fifth that's suspended. So it's a sus, a sus six. That's hard to say. And we land at an A flat. 7 over G flat. Now, the interesting use of inversions in what we've seen so far is that it changes the stability of each chord. So finishing on a 7th chord, a dominant 7 is already pretty unstable, and it suggests that something's happening and something is building later. And we can see this in the dynamics crescendoing through a cadence point is not usually what happens in a chorale. The fact that it's over the dominant seventh here, and we've got this G flat in the bass, really suggests that something is coming. The G flat actually falls to an F here. Even though that we jump up an octave, we've still fallen from a G flat to an F, as you can see right there. Okay, the next analysis section is these four bars, and this is the trickiest part that I found. And let's go through it together. So, we start with F, and we just go up to a D flat. And then from here, we move up and back down. Again, we see a lot of added chords. A lot of this could just be defined as I'm not going to call them cluster chords, but they're more just tonal clusters. We see a lot of added fourths and sus fours. Um, the fourth is quite interesting because, as we've seen in a lot of contemporary music, the fourth scale degree is often utilised a fair bit in terms of the Lydian mode, which we haven't spoken about yet, but we will talk about at some point in the future. So the fourth is quite an interesting tone, and it's an interesting colour as well. The way I've analysed these chords is that I've taken it from the bass note each time, rather than going from anything else. 
which means that we actually start and finish on an F minor chord. This one is an F minor six that we start on. And this one is an F minor seven flat nine that we finish on. There's no fifth in this last chord, but you don't really need the fifth to define the tonality. Yeah, so the D flat sus four here, we've got the suspension here, but we've got the same note that carries through to provide the flat nine. So that's the flat nine. It's an interesting chord progression here, and it's an interesting tonal activity and listening activity as well. So it's a really good practice to actually go and get into the nitty gritty and really get into this. So that's my analysis. There you go.